Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today, we're gonna dive into some more real estate accounting. And we're gonna go through some, what seems like potentially complex items here, but it's really not that bad. What we're gonna talk about is tracking your expenses on uh, investment property. And when we say expenses, we actually mean your capital improvements on those investment properties. And we're gonna track those to be able to pull reports on how much we spend in different categories. And eventually in this video or the next, we're gonna talk about uh, how we can make journal entries to put those expenses to the right place, whether they be capital improvements or they be um, expenses, all right? So uh, we're gonna be in QuickBooks Online. And if you're using a different accounting software, I'm sure that uh, Things will match up relatively uh, similarly, but uh, this should work out nicely. So what I have here is a balance sheet of a fake business that um, not much going on here. We have some money in a checking account and we have um, a property, 123 Main Street. And I'll just show you the journal entry for this property. We kept it super, super simple. We don't have any closing costs on this. So we spent uh, a little bit of our cash, but really we just financed this with a mortgage to purchase this property for 175,000. So that's kind of gonna be where we're gonna spend money on uh, improvements as well. And so when it comes to tracking your rehab, so if I'm gonna get into this project, I'm gonna start spending money on demolition and rough plumbing and rough electric and all that stuff. How do we account for that in the right way? Now we could make an expense account for um, construction costs. And I encourage you to, to do that, which is great, but how do we, see that when I spend money, I'm spending it on a specific category. Well, that's what we're gonna dive into today. But to start, let's make sure we have that expense account ready to go so that we can uh, track to something anyways. All right, so in your chart of accounts, I'm going to encourage you to set up some kind of uh, expense account for direct construction costs. Now there might be one already like pre-filled in here. I don't know, let's see, um, let's just kind of do a search. This is. Yeah, not really. Improvements, not either. So let's just make one, no problem, all right? So new, okay, we're gonna call this um, a uh, an expense. And um, the type doesn't really matter, but let's see if they give us anything. Cost of labor is kind of close. Um, let's just do that for now. All right, we're gonna call this direct direct construction costs, right? So I could create expenses to that now, okay? So I could go in and create an expense uh, from my checking account, direct construction costs, right? Okay, so I could do that. And I maybe put in a class for 123 Main Street. And that way I'd be able to track that I spent $35 on 123 Main Street. Okay, so I have my expense for 123 Main Street, and that'll continue to track to my profit and loss. Okay. Now, whether or not that's a good thing is for us to kind of think about and to talk about, right? So if I'm spending money on um, if I'm spending money on the renovation of my property, does it really make sense for that to show up in my profit and loss? I'm really adding to my assets. And that's where we're going to eventually talk about how a journal entry for these capital improvements will make sense, okay? Um, so right now you can see I've spent $35 on direct construction costs. My P&L shows a negative 35. That is probably not accurate from an accounting standpoint because when we are spending money, especially big things when it comes to framing, rough plumbing, all that stuff, we're actually doing capital improvements. However, tracking to expenses is kind of an intermediary way of doing it. And you'll see why in a second that we're gonna be able to get some intelligence around what different areas we're spending in. Direct construction costs is extremely general. If I had another one, I'm sorry there, that's, um, I want to go back to my expenses and create another one. Okay, if I create another expense from my checking account, and it is, again, for direct construction costs, but this one is for rough electric, and this one is for $4,500. 
All right, so now you see that I'm spending a lot more money there. The problem is that I can't tell on any reports where I spent money on Rough Electric and where I've spent money on other things. I can't tell that at all. And that's where products and services comes into play. All right, so that's what we're gonna get into for the rest of this video. What products and services are, are a way of you tracking your expenses and your sales to specific categories. And when it comes to construction and capital improvements, there's a set of categories that you can establish for yourself so you can draw up some reports that show you exactly um, where you're spending your money. So if I were to take this profit and loss, and let's do it for, um, for the year, and you can spend, see I've spent this much, if I were to grab all of my direct construction costs and group them by product or service, they're not specified yet. But what I'm gonna show you is how we can specify products and services to make this report a lot more useful. All right, and I'm, what I'm gonna do real quick too is just increase this 35 to uh, 1500. I'm going to create a new one, okay, um, which will also be for rough electric. Wiring, okay, let's do that. 1450, class 123 Main Street. Okay, so now here's my report. I spent 7450 on this project so far, but I have no idea, at least from a reporting standpoint, how much I spent on electric, how much did I spend on other stuff. Let's pretend that this other one is demo. All right, I can put it in the description, but I can't do any, you know, QuickBooks, it's not intelligent to QuickBooks. So what we need to do is use products and services. What are products and services? Well, if we go over to our products and services, you see that they default for you. I don't really have anything here. Products and services allow you to add specific categories so that you can track your sales, but in our case, most importantly, our expenses to specific categories. Now, what categories are we going to use? Well, that's for you to determine. You hear me saying rough electric, you hear me saying um, demo, etc. So it's up to you to kind of determine those, but let's create a few, all right? Create a non-inventory item. Let's call this one rough electric. Category, you're gonna be able to add your own. I'm gonna call this construction costs. Class, you don't need to designate that yet. The sales information and the purchase information. If you say, I purchased this uh, from a vendor, which you will, you wanna put that in there. An expense account, you're saying, when I purchase and I itemize things to this rough electric, where should it go? And you should make it go to your direct construction cost. Save and close that, all right? Let's do one more for demo. Now you're gonna make these non-inventory items. For, for your expenses, that's really what makes the most sense. I guess services would, would be okay too. But uh, let's do this one as demolition. Construction costs. All right, save and close that. So now I have two services there from which I can choose from. So how do we get our transactions to show those? Let's go look at our expenses. All right, so I have these three expenses in there. If I click on them, you see that I can put them to direct construction costs. There's no place for me to put an item or anything here. All I can do is select from my chart of accounts, which in general is good for most everyday expenses, but for these ones, I need a little more intelligence. So what we need to do is turn on item tracking. All right, so to do that, we go to our uh, account settings, company settings, and we go to expenses, and we turn on show items table. All right, so go here and click that on. And then we're done there. And now what we can do is something that I think is really awesome. Let's go to that report again, and I should have saved it, but uh, let's go do this again. <clears throat> I haven't saved any reports here, but. Okay, let's grab all those direct construction costs and let's save this customization. Transaction reports and uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so now it's ready. I also wanna group this by uh, product and service, which currently I don't have any, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is show you how we can gain that intelligence. So let's grab a few of these transactions. And now instead of when we tag them to the account direct construction costs, instead 
Let's move down here to item details, click that drop down. If I click in product or services, it's going to now give me those products and services that I um, was able to put in. So I can select from that list, I can continue adding descriptions. And now instead of having wiring up here, I'm gonna have one times, a, times the rate of 1450, or potentially you have some details about quantity and item cost, right? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, make that uh, to your to your building, then get rid of this one up here. You don't need that one anymore. So you have the 1450 goes here. So if I click save and close, now what I have is that it starts to learn how much I'm spending for, in this case, rough electric. Let's continue doing that. All right, so now this one is like, let's say my rough electric labor, product uh, details, rough electric, and let's say that this is labor, and let's say that they were there, you know, um, let's say that we had eight hours at, or maybe even 16. All right, and then let's do another line item for materials. And let's just take 4,500 minus 1,600, 2,900. All right, let's delete this one up here. Save and close. Now you see my rough electric is starting to fill in. So 5950 on rough electric. This one's still not specified. Let's make this one demo. So I go down here and I can type in demo. And this is maybe a dumpster plus labor or something. Okay. Save and close that. And now my report for construction costs gives me my demolition, I spent 1500, and my rough electric, I've spent 59.50. Now, that is a lot more intelligent for me. I can track my project costs at a more detailed level. Maybe I've made budgets for these things and I can track those. So this is an intro to this concept. In this series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about where you can get your products and services from, where you can get a really nice pre-made list. I'm gonna provide that for you. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, how we can make some different reports to really help us. So obviously right now I only have the one property. It's really easy to see this, but what if we have multiple properties going on? You saw me tagging to the class. We're gonna talk about how you can tag to a class, you can potentially tag to a customer. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the all important journal entries that you need to make to fit your accounting books and what your accountant wants to do. So if we're spending money on this property and it's going to direct construction costs, that's fine but it shows as a loss on our P&L. That may or may not be accurate. You know, at the end of the year, you're gonna capitalize a lot of those expenses. So what we're gonna do is show you how you can make a fixed asset account for that capital improvement and make some really simple journal entries to pull them out of direct construction costs and put them back into um, a capital improvement. All right, so many more uh, videos to come in this series. If you have any specific questions on this one or what we're gonna be doing in the future, feel free to put them below. But um, we'll have a lot more coming out uh, week by week here. So um, look forward to, to demonstrating this. It's really, really helped me in my business, both in flipping houses and also in my uh, residential remodeling business. All right, thanks for watching, we'll talk soon.